when we stop start talking about uh, ordered pairs, and remember ordered pairs are a collection of two values, one that correlates with an x-coordinate and a y-coordinate. But when we're talking about ordered pairs, what it gives us is an organized way that we can talk about two different variable values. And it allows us to extend the types of equations that we can actually solve. So for this unit, we're going to see a lot of equations that have both a y and an x value as part of them. Now, let's see how our ordered pair values here can work to see if these points for these points if our ordered pair satisfies the equation. And remember, something satisfies the equation if after you plug the values in, you end up with two things that are equal. So after plugging in your values, both sides of the equation are equal. So here, what we'd want to do, for example, to see if negative 7, 8 is a solution or satisfies the equation y equals 1 minus x, we're going to take the x coordinate of negative 7 and put it in for x, so 1 minus negative 7. We're going to take the y coordinate, which is 8, and plug it in for y. Really, the biggest thing you've got to pay attention to is to make sure that x goes in the first or the first number goes in the x position, the second number goes in the y position. Now we just want to see if this works. So for example, on this side, 1 minus negative 7 is 8. And since 8 is equal to 8, then this point does satisfy the equation. Negative 7, 8 is what we would call a solution for the equation y equals 1 minus x. All right, well, that worked for point A. Let's see if point B works. Here, our value was 0, 1. So when we go over here, we're going to go to the y equals 1 minus x equation. Anytime that we see x, we're going to plug in 0. Anytime we see y, we're going to plug in 1. All right, so let's do it. So we start with y, so we're going to have 1 equals 1 minus, and instead of x, we're going to plug in 0. Well, 1 equals 1 minus 0 is 1. That works. So the point 0, 1 is also a solution to our equation. Now, when we solved equations with only one variable, we really only seemed to find one answer, unless we had a squared, and then we found two answers, or a cubed, and we would sometimes find three answers. So here, the fact that we have uh, two variables, notice that we found more than one solution that works. All right, well, that's kind of interesting. Let's see what else happens here. So if we check out our point C, so here we're looking at the point 3, negative 2. Again, the 3 is x, the y is negative 2, so let's plug it into our equation. We're still using the y equals 1 minus x. So instead of y, we have negative 2 equals 1 minus x is 3. And sure enough, negative 2 is equal to 1 minus 3 is negative 2. So the point C is also a solution. All right, we kind of seem a, kind of starting to see a pattern here. Let's see what else happens. Here, let's check out negative 1, 0. Again, negative 1 is x and 0 is y. So plugging things in, we have 0 equals 1 minus, instead of x, we have negative 1. 1 minus negative 1 is 2. Uh-oh, this is not a solution to our system, or to our equation. This ordered pair does not satisfy the equation. So point D does not work. What about point E? Here we have the point negative 20, positive 21. We start with y, which is 21, equals 1 minus x, which was negative 20. That one does work. So we can see that when we have two variables, we actually end up with quite a few different solutions that work, but also solutions that don't work. Um, so it's a little, bit, a little bit interesting as we go in. Here's another equation. Here we have 2x plus y equals 0. In this case, uh, we're, we just want to go through and test each of these points to see if the ordered pair satisfies the equation. So for example, for point A, 6, negative 12, we're going to put 6 in for x and negative 12 in for y. Let's see what happens. 2 times x is 6 plus y was negative 12. 2 times 6 is 12 plus negative 12 is 0. That does work. So point A is uh, does satisfy my equation. For point B, negative 1, 2, we're going to use 2 times x, which is negative 1, plus y, which is 2. That gives us negative 2 plus 2 is 0. That one works. For C, 4, negative 8, notice that we have 2 times x, which is 4, plus negative 8. 
2 times 4 is 8 plus negative 8 is 0. That point satisfies my equation. If we look at d here, we have 0, negative 2. So if we plug that in, it's going to be 2 times x is 0 plus y, which is negative 2. Well, 2 times 0 is 0 plus negative 2 gives me negative 2. That does not work. So d does not satisfy the equation. Point e, 0, 0. Here we have 2 times 0 for x plus 0 for y. That gives us 0 plus 0 is 0, which does work to satisfy my equation. So again, a, a, a variety of points that work, but not everything works um, by any means as we go through. Um, so one thing that I'd kind of like you to notice is there does, there, there, there does seem to be a type of pattern in, in how the points are related to each other. And if we plot all of the points that work, um, we actually end up getting a, a, a graph in kind of some nice shapes, and that's what our focus is going to be here for the rest of uh, for the rest of this unit. Um, so, how do we kind of go about doing that? Well, what we would like to do, if we want to try to sketch a graph of solutions that work, what I need to do first is find some points that work. You're not always just going to be given points and say and asked does this work or not? We actually want to find points that work. What we're looking for to find points that work is we want points that will make uh, make the equation true, so things that will go together. The truth is, we could, there are lots of things that do work. Um, one thing that I like to do is pick some points for x. Because once you pick a point for x, there's really only going to be one point for y that's going to make this equation work. So let's see what happens. If I pick x is equal to 0, then my y value has to be equal to negative 2 times 0 plus 1. Well, I can figure that out. Negative 2 times 0 is 0, plus 1 is 1. So when x is equal to 0, my y value is equal to 1, and I have an ordered pair, 0, 1, that works and satisfies this particular equation. So over here on my graph, I can plot the point 0, 1. Remember, we go 0 on the x axis, so 0 left and right, and then 1 on the y axis, 1 up, and that gives me a point that's on my graph. If we look at our next value here, if I use x equals 1, I can find the y value that goes along with x equals 1. So here I'm going to have y is equal to negative 2 times, I'm going to see what happens when x is equal to 1 this time, plus 1. Again, I'm just going up here to my equation and I'm plugging in uh, the value for x that I want to try and then finding the y that would go along with it. In this case, negative 2 times 1 is negative 2, negative 2 plus 1 is negative 1, and now I have the point 1, negative 1, and I can plot that on my graph. 1 to the right on the x direction, negative 1, so down 1 in the y direction, and there's another point that satisfies my equation. For the point, for if x is equal to 2, I can also find the y coordinate that works for that point. So if I put in positive 2 for x, then I can evaluate this, negative 2 times positive 2 is negative 4, negative 4 plus 3, or sorry, negative 4 plus 1 is negative 3, and now I have a y-coordinate that goes along with that, and I can plot the point 2, negative 3, 2, 1, 2, 3, there's another point here. Now keep in mind I just randomly picked values for x. I like 0 because it's really easy to plug in, I like 1 because it's easy to plug in, and it's nice to just pick simple numbers that work. Uh, keep in mind you can plug in whatever you want. For example, I could plug in uh, negative 3 and see what happens. So here we get y equals negative 2 times negative 3 plus 1. That gives me positive 6 plus 1 gives me 7. And I could go to negative 3 and up to 7 and plot a point way up here. I could pick a point like um, point 0.5 for x. So you can do um, values like that. If I do negative 2 times 0.5, I get negative 1, plus 1 gives me 0, and I can get another point here at positive 0.5 and 0. So which values you pick for x are entirely up to you, but once you pick a value for x, the value for y that goes along with it is set, so you have to figure out where that is. Um, now here, because this this is what we call a linear equation, and it, it, um, it's because these variables for both x and y don't have any strange things going on. No powers, no roots, nothing nothing weird. But if you look at the points over here on our graph, um, you may notice that 
they all seem to the the solutions that work all seem to lie on a line and this is definitely going to be the case and we'll learn some more about the special properties of linear functions uh, in the next in the next topic but for now what I really just want to do is say okay let's plot some points let's find some solutions that work in this equation put them on my graph and then use that to draw the graph I like to pick at least three points when I'm doing linear equations you really only need two points so that you can connect the dots but I found that three helps me um, get a slightly more accurate graph and will help me to identify mistakes in my calculations if I made any all right, so with that in mind, let's just try a couple of other simple examples here. I want to uh, give you some hints and ideas. Um, so if, for example, we want to plot the graph of y, the, the equation y equals x, we can do that just by finding pairs of points that fit this equation um, and then plotting them on my graph. So for example here, you can pick any value of x that you want. For example, if I pick negative 4 for x, then for this equation, my y also has to be negative 4 because y is equal to x. So I could plot the point negative 4, negative 4. Oops. So for example, there's negative 4 in the x, negative 4, oh, ah, try again, negative 4 on the y. So there's one point. I could plot the point, if I pick x equals 0, the y value is also equal to 0. So the point 0, 0 is on my graph. If I pick an x value of 2, the y value is also 2. So I could plot the point 2, 2 that goes along with that. And again, once you've found a couple of points, you can draw the line that goes through those. Um, and you will have sketched a graph based on that particular equation. As my last example here, same idea. Keep in mind that you can pick any values for x you want. So I often like, like I said, I often like to pick zero because it's easy to plug in. Here I get y equals 2 thirds times instead of x, I'm going to put in zero minus 2. 2 thirds times 0 is 0, 0 minus 2 is negative 2, so there's my y coordinate, and I can plot the point 0, negative 2 on my graph, which would be right here. Now let's see what happens if I plug 1 in. That's often easy to do. If I plug 1 in for x, I have y equals 2 thirds times 1 minus 2. Okay, well, 2 thirds times 1 is 2 thirds, and then I want to subtract 2 from that. Uh-oh, well, I'm subtracting with fractions. I need a common denominator. I can get a common denominator of 3 here, so I end up with 2 thirds minus, that'll be 6 thirds, and I end up with negative 4 thirds for y. So I end up with this point of 1 and negative 4 thirds. Well, when you go to plot 1 to the right, that's easy. Negative 4 thirds on the y-axis, this is a little bit trickier. I often find it's helpful to change my fractional values either into mixed numbers or into decimals to see how far down to go with when I do my graph. So for example, negative 4 thirds is negative 1 and 1 third. So I'm going to go 1 on the x and then down 1 and 1 third. So there's kind of a little bit of a drop it, um, below the 1 line here. Um, or if you think of this as negative 1.3, Notice that it's just a little bit below negative 1, not quite down to negative 2. So that we can pick that for a point. Now, you may notice that this doesn't make for a very nice point to graph on your graph. It's a little, it, you certainly can do it. It's just, it's hard to be accurate. So another hint that I'd like to give you is when you're picking, because you get to pick whichever points for x you want, um, I would really recommend picking a point for x that might be easier to evaluate. It, because I know I'm going to be multiplying by a fraction that has 3 in the denominator, if I pick an x value that 3 will go into, then I'll be able to cancel and reduce my fractions and I'll get an answer that's not a fraction. So for example, if I pick um, 6 as my x value, Let's see what happens there. So if I pick 6 for x, I'm going to have y equals 2 thirds times 6 minus 2. If I put that over 1, notice that works out really nice. The denominators reduce out. I'm left with 2 times 2 is 4. 4 minus 2 is 2. And I end up with a point that lies on whole numbers, which is a little bit simpler to graph. Now notice even my fractional value here, if I connect the dots between these points, my fractional value does get picked up. So there's nothing wrong with getting these. It's just they're a little harder to work with. They're a little harder to evaluate. Um, and they're a little bit harder to graph accurately. So in situations like this, I often recommend, like I said, looking for multiples um, of 
3 so that the fractions will cancel out when you evaluate. So choosing 3 or 6, negative 3 or negative 6 would be easier values to evaluate and to graph than uh, some other ones might be. So just kind of some hints. Uh, again, keep in mind that when you're plotting points, you pick the x value. Totally up to you. Doesn't make any difference what you choose. Uh, it's just you want to pick something that you'll be able to graph. Um, but once you pick an x value, you have to use the formula to get the y value that goes with it because you need it to make the equation true for it to be a solution. Um, and then the graph represents the solutions that would work um, to make the equ original equation true. We'll do some more with graphing here in the, in the next couple of units as well.